Well, good afternoon. Hopefully, after all the food, no one is going to be in food coma. Um, thank you for taking the time to come and attend this uh, brief session. My name is Manisha Arora, and um, I am part of the products team with Ravello Systems. Just to uh, give you all a little background about who we are and what we do, uh, we are the same founding team that uh, built KVM Hypervisor. I'm sure all of you out here are familiar with KVM. And our new platform, which is the Ravello platform, it's actually a brand new, built from scratch hypervisor platform, which runs in nested mode on top of public cloud like AWS and Google. So there are really great things you can do with it once you've got a, a hypervisor running in nested mode, and that's kind of what I want to share with you, including building OpenStack lab environments and running them on top of AWS and Google Cloud. So that's uh, a little bit background about, uh, about the company. Essentially, the, uh, you know, our, our mission as a company with our platform is to enable enterprises as well as uh, software product development companies to run any application on any public cloud without having to worry about whether their application networking, their application images, et cetera, is going to work or not on, a, on, you know, on one specific public cloud or not. And to be able to leverage the public clouds for uh, dev and test purposes. And when we say any application, we also mean OpenStack environments. You know, most of you all uh, who are out here, you're all in some way or other associated with some sort of uh, dev test certification effort that you're doing either as part of the OpenStack community or you know, working to make your products work with or on top of uh, OpenStack. And uh, you all need uh, as many multi-node OpenStack test environments. We all know right now that most of the OpenStack testing is either carried out on dev stack, single node setup by developers, and that's mostly unit testing. And then you have uh, you know, a couple of uh, multi-node integration test environments where you are doing your uh, more uh, automated test for, uh, for your sprints and for your build. What we've heard from most of the OpenStack ISV customers is, the, is this need to have um, ability to really not be dependent on bare metal, to have test environment for OpenStack, but to be able to leverage, um, or, or to be free from the bare metal restriction, but to leverage the public cloud so they can um, have on-demand ab ability to build OpenStack test environment, integrate it as part of their OpenStack CI, if, if that's something that you're doing. And uh, that's really what we are focused on um, in enabling you to do with our uh, hypervisor platform. And how do we do it? So let me actually kind of describe the technology to you, and then I'll actually show you a demo of uh, OpenStack environments working on top of uh, AWS. You know, I think, I think you know, a lot of you are probably familiar with this. You know, the evolution of virtualization, right, kind of goes like this. Physical server, one-to-one, -one, right? And then you had the likes of VMware and KVM, which is the same team that built Ravello. They essentially virtualized the bare metal. Right. Now, we have actually taken virtualization one step further. In fact, two steps further. You'll see how we've done it. So with our hypervisor, which runs on ta in, in nested mode, we have essentially, when we run our hypervisor on AWS, which itself is you know, virtualized, um, you can see we are actually doing nested virtualization. And we essentially abstract the public cloud for you. So your application environments, they could be VMware-based environments or KVM environments, you can simply upload your application virtual images. So OVF files, QCOR files, you simply upload them and you can run them on top of our hypervisor, um, which essentially is running them on AWS instances. So that's sort of the third phase of virtualization, which is nested virtualization, where we actually took it one step further. 
we were hearing from our customers that, you know, this is great because this gives us the ability to now take our existing application environments and uh, use the public cloud to create replicas of those so we can use them for dev test purposes without having to do migration and convert our images or rebuild environments from scratch. But now we actually want to also um, do things like run KVM on top of AWS so we can build KVM labs. We, we, have, you know, we are starting to do work on OpenStack. We'd like to be able to set up OpenStack lab without having to wait for the physical hardware and you know, provision them uh, every time we need an environment. We want to leverage the public cloud compute capacity to do it. So can you, can you figure out a way to now um, build and run OpenStack on top of AWS? Well, you cannot, you, with, you know, without Ravello hypervisor currently, you cannot really run OpenStack on top of AWS. You cannot run KVM on top of AWS. You can run it with QMU, and I think some of you may be already doing it, but we all know how bad the performance is with QMU. It's, you, you can primarily use it for dev purposes. So we actually programmatically emulated Intel VT on our hypervisor. And by doing that, you can actually now run hypervisors like KVM on top of our HVX hypervisor. So sort of like double nesting um, is what you're able to do that. So KVM can actually now be run in native mode on top of our Ravello hypervisor on AWS. And uh, because it runs in native mode, um, it actually gives you bare metal speed and you can do you know, wonderful things with it then. You can build your own KVM labs for testing you know, dev and test purposes. And then obviously you can now run OpenStack environments on top of AWS on demand for your OpenStack related projects. So here's, here's kind of how it will look like. Um, it's just, this is just an example and I'll show you in the demo. So essentially, we offer our platform as software as a service. So all you do is you go to ravellosystems.com, you create an account, um, and then you can get started. You, if you have OpenStack running on KVM in your lab, um, you can actually, and if you have the ability to export um, images, QCOR images for all the nodes in your OpenStack, then it's very easy. You can just upload those QCOR images onto our platform, and then you'll be able to run pretty much create a replica of what you have and run it on AWS. That's one way of doing it. Second is you can actually build from scratch a multi-node OpenStack environment. You can take Ubuntu, you can upload Ubuntu ISO, build your VMs on our hypervisor, and then um, you know, use whichever distribution you want to use to uh, install your multi-node OpenStack environment. We support, um, you know, we support upload and boot from ISO. We support IPixie boot. So essentially, we are making the AWS, uh, we are exposing the AWS as a bare metal to you um, for you to be able to do, you know, build labs uh, related to OpenStack and use them for your uh, integration testing purposes. These are some of the ways our customers are using us. As I said, you know, uh, a lot of our customers um, use us for one-off uh, OpenStack labs. Um, they're also using us to create virtual labs for OpenStack training. So if you have to deliver OpenStack training across the globe, no better way to do it than to use public cloud infrastructure like AWS. And with us, you can create virtual labs um, on demand and then uh, deliver training for OpenStack or for your products running on top of OpenStack. If you're doing extensive dev and test around OpenStack, then we have customers who have actually built the whole CI pipeline. So essentially they, with the click of a button, they are able to set up different OpenStack environment with different distribution configuration uh, for each of their swim lanes, you know, run their automated test and uh, complete their testing. They pay hourly so you know you depending upon how small or large your setup is whether it's a single node setup or a multi node setup you know you could be paying as low as 30 cents per hour or a dollar 70 per hour so, you know whatever it is but you're essentially uh, paying per usage you pay for when your environments are up and running and then you get as many environments as you need 
for uh, all your, to test all your sprints and to also do scale testing if you want to do that. Let me now jump into the demo and show you um, how it works. So to start um, using the, the technology, you'll essentially go to uh, ravelosystems.com. Um, since it's offered as SaaS, you don't have to install anything on premise. You come in, you create an account, um, you, you, know, you activate your account, and you're ready to start. Once you log in, you actually come to this dashboard, which is basically a snapshot view of all your application environments that you have available here. As you can see, some of them you're still working on, some of them are up and running, and you know, some of them are turned off. And you can see that you know, they are running on public cloud, Amazon Virginia. And you can also select different regions, and different, you, know, you can choose between Amazon and, and Google as well. So essentially, the idea is that um, you, you can do it two ways, as I said. Uh, we have some uh, public blueprints available of simple OpenStack uh, setup. So we have, I think we have RDO Ice House 4 node blueprint available that if you want to get started right away, you create an account, you can send an email to our support. They will make that blueprint available in your library, which is uh, the blueprint library that you see on top. Um, and that way you can get started right away. Or if you want to build from scratch your own OpenStack um, test environment and kind of save it for future use, then you will come in and say, you know, create a new application. I'm going to call it, as an example, OpenStack test environment, um, you create it from scratch, and this opens up uh, this workspace area that you see here on the right-hand side. And on this is your repository of all the images. Some of these images, uh, these are essentially uh, virtual images, right? OVF, QCA, ISO, whatever. And some of them you may have uploaded from your data center or from your labs, and some you have actually built from scratch. So if you are building uh, the, your setup for OpenStack from scratch, and let's say you want to do it on Ubuntu, right? So you can do it a couple of ways. Um, you can use our um, publicly available Ubuntu versions that we have, or if you want to use specific version like Ubuntu 14.04, you upload that ISO to this account using the import VM. When you upload it, it's actually going to show up here in your image library. Okay, then you will take an empty VM. So you can see here, this is sort of like an empty shell VM. You'll take this empty VM, and you will actually be able to install and boot this VM with that ISO. So you go to disk, and you can see here, hard disk based on image. Here you can select your ISO, so you could select Ubuntu 14.04 server image or whatever you have uploaded, and you're actually going to be able to build a server with your ISO and run it on top of AWS, something that you cannot do with Amazon Native. I think all of you probably are aware of that, that you cannot build servers on Amazon uh, you know, using ISO. So, so this is step number one if you're building from scratch. So let's say you've done it and you've got a 14.04 um, host ready for your uh, OpenStack installation. Um, then essentially what you're going to do next is drag and drop those images onto this workspace area. So let me go ahead and delete this. You'll drag and drop the images onto this workspace area. And think of this work workspace as your um, application capsule or a capsule for your environment that you are creating. So, you know, you can, you, this is where you're going to be placing all of your uh, server components, your network appliances, if you want to put that, your own uh, build images. If you, you know, if you've done CI and all, you're going to be uploading them through our APIs, and this is where they'll show up. And once you put all of these images here, let me actually show you an example of an OpenStack environment that's up and running. So we built this one here. Delete this. 
So this is an RDO ice house four node environment. So we, what we did was we took, the, we took the Ubuntu images. So each of these is my Ubuntu host, right? And then I used, uh, I uploaded the RDO installer and I pretty much essentially built my uh, multi-node setup. Um, you can, for example, if you, if you are using a distribution like SUSE or Mirantis or whatever, um, you can actually also iPixie boot these nodes from your controller or admin node. You're able to do that as well um, as part of the installation, uh, installation steps that you go through. So essentially, you've kind of done all that. And what is other coo you know, another cool thing about, uh, about this platform is that we give you a clean layer to an app. So you know, our hypervisor also includes an SDN. So we are giving you the ability to configure layer to an app essentially any way you want. Um, so it's especially very relevant in the case of OpenStack because you may actually want to have multiple, you know, you're going to have your tenant network, you're going to have your management network, and, you know, you, if you are testing your network appliances uh, with OpenStack, then you may actually want to have them working in conjunction with the OpenStack Neutron service and all. So you can upload your network appliance image and configure it to work with the test OpenStack environment or as part of. So these things you're seeing, right, these are all virtual switches that you can create um, through the UI, and the system will then compile the network uh, for, for you, for your environment. So essentially, the idea behind this is to give you an ability to work with public cloud the way you would work with bare metal in your data center. You should be able to do the same things that you're able to do on bare metal, um, you know, and essentially, you know, build the network topology the same way you're able to do um, in your lab. So, for example, if I click on one of these uh, machines here, um, you're going to see that this is where you configure the network. So you can have multiple NICs, you can have VLANs, you know, you can use our DHCP service. Or if one of your module is going to be providing the DHCP service, then you're going to be able to configure it that way as well for your, uh, for your OpenStack setup. You can have, uh, this is where you would assign uh, VLANs and all for, uh, for your setup. So once you, once you have configured your environment, then you can essentially run it on uh, public cloud. So the process of running is basically publishing it, or if you've made changes to an existing one, it, the process is called updating. So if I click here on update, you'll actually see, uh, well, let me show you a brand new one because this is already up and running. Um, let me take this one. This is turned off. So um, yep. Let's see. There you go. So when you want to run it, you'll actually click on Publish as an example. And you can see here, this is where you can select the public cloud you want to run it on. We support multiple public clouds. The Microsoft Azure is still under development, so it's not available public yet. But you can select between Amazon, Google. You can select a specific zone to run that lab uh, in, that, in that particular zone. And then you publish it. And when you publish it, all of your machines, and I'll go back and show you the one that's running because it, it'll take a few minutes to come up. So you can see this one. So all of these, these are your host, right? These are your host, and then you've got OpenStack. These hosts are running Ubuntu KVM. They're running OpenStack. And then on Compute Node, you can also upload your guest VMs, right? So you're able to do all of that. And all of these are running in Amazon Virginia. Now, other cool thing, right, one of the key things as part of uh, OpenStack Lab is that you actually need um, console access to your host because you may want to do configuration changes and all, like you would do in your lab environment on bare metal. So we also give you console access to your specific host. So you can see here on the right bottom, you can actually get console access to each of these machines, and then you can kind of log in and be working with them the same way you would work with the uh, physical host in your lab environment. 
Now, the, the other uh, key feature of this in terms of uh, agility um, to spin up environments is that you, once you've built your OpenStack environment, you can actually save that entire environment as a blueprint. So if you save it as a blueprint, then the concept behind blueprint is that with blueprints, you can easily spin up additional copies of these labs on demand with a single click of a button uh, for your CI process or whenever you need it for your integration testing. That's the concept behind Blueprint. So you're not going through the whole process of installing OpenStack every time um, you need a new test environment. Once you have done it here, you save it as a Blueprint. And once you save it as a Blueprint, it shows up in your Blueprint library here. You can select a specific Blueprint and then very quickly, spin up a new application from the Blueprint, select where you want to run it, and it, you'll have a completely isolated lab for your OpenStack that you can use for X number of hours, days, whatever, and then shut it down. So that's, that's behind the, con that's the whole concept of uh, being able to do this. That's kind of what I wanted to share with you. You know, our goal is to, is to give you all the ability to build your developer sandbox and not just be limited to having dev stack on your laptop, but actually be able to build multi-node uh, environments that you can use for your dev activities, for your integration activities, you know, for your CI work, uh, training, and uh, you know, various other lab environment use cases that you can think of. Right? Any questions? Right. Thank you.